Starship Flight 5 is ready to launch. Despite issues with the Falcon 9 rocket, SpaceX remains confident pushing Booster 12 through its final standalone tests in preparation for liftoff with Starship 30. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. After 39 days of waiting since Starship's fourth flight, SpaceX finally conducted a static fire test at its facility in Texas. Early on June 15th, we saw the first signs of a potential static fire after SpaceX placed its tower-catching arms over the booster and closed roads in the nearby areas. The exterior of the Starship booster became frosty, followed by an epic scene, a static fire test, where we could witness most of the Super Heavy booster's power. The fiery test lasted about 10 seconds, with all 33 Raptor engines igniting in groups to ensure a safe startup. If you looked closely during the test, you'd see a large amount of dust kicked up as SpaceX fired the engines and several black patches flying off immediately afterwards, which could be the outer paint layers of the OLM. However, this did not seem too dangerous to the launch pad because the scene appeared relatively clean after the test, indicating no major damage. Furthermore, the test was immediately confirmed successfully through images posted by SpaceX and notably Elon Musk. He affirmed the immense power of the test, stating more than double the power of the Saturn V moon rocket. Indeed, Starship at launch will generate a massive thrust of nearly 17 million pounds. That's around 7,600 tons compared to Saturn V 7.6 million pounds or 3,450 tons. This is a point of pride for the rocket of a new era, surpassing all past limits. Drop us a heart in the comments if you agree, and make sure to please like and subscribe our channel. Thanks. And this superior power of the Super Heavy Booster is all thanks to Raptor engines, the key to SpaceX's success. Clearly, we can see their gradual improvement through Starship's test flights from 1 to 4. While the first and second flights had many engines fail during launch, the third flight had only a few failures, and finally the latest flight saw only a single engine fail during liftoff. And all engines for Starship's entry and landing burn reignited successfully. These engines are also key for the second stage of Starship's performance, especially since SpaceX has to demonstrate space Raptor engine ignition at some point during the Starship testing. As in-space engine ignition is a complex process requiring engineers to carefully manage the fuel and tank pressurization, since a rocket isn't vertical when it's traveling in space, the fuel inside the tanks are more volatile because of a lack of gravity. The chances of an anomaly happening are a lot higher than here on Earth. SpaceX has intended to test in space ignition with a third Starship test earlier this year. However, plans were scrapped at the last moment, and there's little publicly available on this decision. Along with the in-space ignition, Starship's Flight 5 may also see SpaceX attempt a tower catch for the first time. Although catching the booster with a launch tower is a central part of Starship's landing plan, it's also one of the riskiest maneuvers since even the slightest miscalculation can lead to pad destruction. This could set the Starship program back, not only because SpaceX would have to rebuild infrastructure if a backup pad's not available, but it might also pause future tests due to regulatory oversight. It's likely for this reason that Kathy Luters, SpaceX's GM over at Starbase, mentioned to local residents last month that SpaceX is still considering whether to attempt to catch a booster on the next flight. However, SpaceX officials think that this is the best way to recover the booster as it allows SpaceX to quickly reuse the rocket. Furthermore, earlier this month, SpaceX released a promotional video for the next Starship flight, indicating that the booster catch is back on the table. SpaceX will also use the fifth Starship test flight to test upgraded heat shields on the ship or upper stage after the heating process during reentry damaged the vehicle during the landing attempt on the previous flight last month. Working inside a hangar on short drive from the launch pad, technicians are replacing thousands of ceramic tiles on Ship 30's outer shell. Once that work is complete, SpaceX will stack the ship onto the booster and likely conduct a full countdown rehearsal a few days ahead of the first launch, which could happen as early as next month. Meanwhile, SpaceX is also diligently constructing its second launch pad at Starbase. Construction activities are progressing rapidly. The construction teams have stacked the first few segments of the second launch towers a short distance from the current Starship launch pad. The new launch pad at Starbase is a crucial element for increasing Starship's launch cadence from Starbase, which SpaceX currently proposes to increase to 25 Starship system launches and 25 Starship and Super Heavy landings a year. In addition to the requirement of a max of 25 launches a year from Starbase, SpaceX is also planning a maximum of 44 Starship launches a year from LC-39A at Kennedy Space Center and a maximum of 76 launches a year from SLC-37B. In total, 
there's going to be 145 Starship launches a year. Within a few years, SpaceX aims to have a total of four Starship launch pads in both Texas and Florida to support the increasing flight rate of Starship. While the preparation of Starship happens in Texas, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket has been temporarily grounded as engineers investigate the cause of an upper stage issue during last week's Starling mission. The company announced on its website June 12th that a liquid oxygen link had developed in the upper stage of Falcon 9. After a planned relight of the upper stage to the lowest point of orbit, the Merlin vacuum engine experienced an anomaly and was unable to complete its second burn, SpaceX said. Although the stage survived and still deployed the satellites, it did not successfully circularize its orbit, but it did passivate itself as normally performed at the end of each mission. This left the satellites in an eccentric orbit with a very low perigee of 135 kilometers, 84 miles, which is less than half the expected perigee altitude. Naturally, this incident prompted FAA to launch an investigation before allowing Falcon 9 to resume its future operations. The FAA will be involved in every step of the investigation process and must approve SpaceX's final report, including any corrective actions, an FAA spokesperson said. A return to flight is based on the FAA determining that any system, process, or procedure related to the mishap does not affect public safety. It's unclear when SpaceX and the FAA will complete their investigation, but I think it won't be too challenging because SpaceX has the best engineers in the world. And what we know about this issue suggests it's a leak rather than an RUD, which would complicate matters a whole lot. So far, SpaceX has conducted individual tests for Falcon 9, the latest being July 15th. Stage 2 of Falcon 9 got tested at McGregor, and this is the first time since the Starlink 9 to 3 anomaly and could be a good sign for the progress of SpaceX's investigation. However, this incident has also had some impact on subsequent important missions. The first is a collaboration with NASA called Crew-9, which was supposed to send four astronauts to space in mid-August. The Falcon 9 issue will delay this Crew-9 mission, meaning the astronauts of Crew-8 will have to stay longer on the ISS. While NASA has another option to transport astronauts to the ISS with Boeing Starliner, it is currently in a much more precarious situation compared to SpaceX. Besides the ISS missions, SpaceX is also expected to launch a commercial astronaut mission into space this month with Crew Dragon and Falcon 9 called Polaris Dawn. The mission was planned for late July but might be slightly delayed due to the Falcon 9 investigation. A spokesperson for NASA mentioned that the agency frequently gets updates from SpaceX regarding all aspects of interest related to the Falcon 9 rocket. SpaceX has been transparent with its information and is involving NASA in the ongoing investigation to understand the issue and determine the next steps, NASA stated. NASA will share updates on its missions, including any potential schedule impacts as more details become available. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.